Hello, young scholars. This is Mr. Martyr, and welcome to World Cultures. In this video, we're going to take a look at Era 2 in early humans. And in particular, we're going to take a look at what caused some humans to shift from foraging to farming, and what were the big effects of this change. Now, the entire history of the planet Earth 13.8 billion years of history, we're going to start our story. We're going to zoom in around 50,000 years ago at a really important time when historians and anthropologists believe something called collective learning happened. And that's going to be a really important term that we're going to explore later in the video. All right, young scholars. So we are going to start our story beginning in Afro-Eurasia 300,000 to 200,000 years ago. And we're going to talk about the species Homo sapiens. So what separates humans from animals? Humans are the only animal that uses language to share and store knowledge, and this is a skill that has driven human change and growth for over 100,000 years, allowing us to migrate all across our Earth. Homo sapiens evolved in Africa approximately 300,000 to 200,000 years ago, but we weren't the only humans around during this time. Other human communities existed in various regions of Afro-Eurasia, and they were made up of different species. There were Neanderthals, Homo erectus, and Homo florencines. But Homo sapiens, or humans, are the only human species that is still alive today. Homo sapiens have a smaller build than their earlier human species, and our skulls are a specific a shape. Smaller heads meant Homo sapiens could move faster and quicker from prey and follow their food source more quickly. Evidence of our early existence comes from fossils found in the African country of Ethiopia, and they date back to about 200,000 years. But some researchers think that our species was around for much longer. Around 80,000 to 60,000 years ago, Homo sapiens began moving out of Africa. And historians aren't exactly sure why. Some theories are that Homo sapiens were fighting with other Homo sapiens, or climate or environmental changes affected the Homo sapiens. What we do know is that these early human communities moved around to follow their food source, and these foragers lived off the land by hunting, gathering, and fishing. And each community held no more than 20 to 50 people. Well, again, when you're chasing your food source and food is inconsistent, you don't know where your next meal is going to come from, better to keep the tribe small than to feed a large growing population. And all of this is categorized Paleolithic era or Old Stone Age. And these are men and women who made tools out of stone and bone. Another key development that made our species into modern humans is the development of the Paleolithic age called collective learning. Early foraging societies, elders passed on what they knew to younger individuals. They taught how to hunt and what seasons were best for particular foods. And as a result, each human gained access to knowledge that had been generated by previous generations. And each individual could add to the body of knowledge. Collective learning is, as far as we know, a unique human ability to use language to share and pool information. Uh, for me, the difference, as defined by David Christian, is the difference between a, a standalone computer and a network of computers who are all able to share information Simultaneous Collective learning really separates humans from all other species on this planet, even our closest hominid ancestors. So when we think back to the ancient past and we look at our hominid cousins and predecessors, we wonder what distinguishes Homo sapiens from even the most advanced, such as Neanderthals or Homo erectus. And it appears to be this ability to learn collectively and to share this information. So it's been the fundamental difference between our species and all others and has set human history off on a course quite different to that of any other species. The ability of humans to communicate and learn from one another, that idea of collective learning, gives rise to another major event of the Paleolithic era, and that is called the cognitive revolution. Cognition is the process by which humans gain knowledge through experience and thinking. And a cognitive revolution is a major shift in the ability to gain knowledge and understanding. The Paleolithic cognitive revolution was the point in the old Stone Age when humans developed brain power they needed to develop language, think abstractly, and learn together. At this point, scholars say humans became able to create music, art, dance, toys, tools, and other weapons. These abilities are what we think of when we talk about human behavior and culture today. 
when archaeologists and historians gather to examine Paleolithic cave art, they're looking at art that was made around 45,000 years ago and found predominantly in southern Europe, in Spain, and France. Cave paintings fit our definition of art, and they include paintings of humans and animals and, and other symbolic figures. Other Paleolithic art fits our current definition of three-dimensional figurines known as Venus figures. These little statues may have some spiritual meaning, and some scholars think they represent spirit animals. Humans forged for about 240,000 years prior to the agricultural revolution. Families and tribes are small. The division of labor is done equally. Men hunted while with women gathered, which is really unique when you consider most foraging diet was plant-based. So women had a vital role of humankind's existence. Foragers diet was everything was more or less plant-based and foragers ate a more varied diet. And because they traveled, they exercised pretty constantly. Eventually, what ends up happening is that foragers begin to meet up with other communities in the area. They begin to share tools, share weapons, and because of collective learning, they share ideas. All these interactions lead to the building of early trade networks, which spread throughout the world. As foragers met up and created local communities in their area, and as they created their small networks of trade, and as they shared food and weapons and ideas, there's other evidence that foraging communities may have also met up for spiritual or religious purposes. Stonehenge in England might have been one such site. So let's go back to our Era 2 timeline. Our story begins 250,000 years ago. We know that early humans began to hunt and they gather food. And shortly thereafter, collective learning and the cognitive revolution takes place. Humans begin to learn how to control fire. And then humans begin to migrate around the world. And that's all that happens for a really long time. Putting things in perspective, the movement around the earth takes about 240,000 years. That's a really long time. Until about 10,000 years BCE, some humans begin to farm in what is one of mankind's pivotal turning points. This is known as the agricultural revolution. The agricultural revolution, as we're about to see, is a game changer for humans. As the climate warmed on planet Earth, ice began to melt, valleys became lush and fertile, and people began to settle. This meant that human groups no longer had to move around to follow their food source. They made a slow, long transition from foraging to a more settled way of life and farming. Eventually, humans would learn how to domesticate animals and plants, and this new way of getting food presented tremendous changes, but one of the most significant transitions in human history. So think, what caused some humans to shift from foraging to farming? And make a prediction, what are going to be some of the effects that the agricultural revolution is gonna have on the human species? As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always reach out via email. Otherwise, I will see you in class, and we will follow up and have a discussion on how the agricultural revolution changed human history.